and be converted that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing come from the presence of the Lord. The only way that your spirit is going to be restored is by turning back to God. And the only restoration that is real restoration is the one that comes from self-examination and also with repentance. Repentance is not only for what you did, it is also for what you allowed to enter your spirit. I'm going to preach this. I don't want to hear this part, but it's true. You are responsible for what goes inside your spirit, too. You are responsible for what you allow to mess you up in your spirit. I'm going to hear me. Because you may have not said anything, but you carry resentment because you were never recognized. Pastor always called him so-and-so name. He never called my name. I do all this around the church. And even though you never said it out loud, you better hear me. There's some resentment that comes. And so Pastor want to go shake your hand at the church, but, but you got like that to do your hair or something real quick because you mad at Pastor because you are not carrying resentment because you will never recognize Can I preach this thing inside here? Sometimes we can run our family and our family never recognize us and we carry resentment for them. And the Bible says that you got to repent because you will carry resentment for not being recognized and it's going to damage your spirit. And what is repentance? It is only turning and saying, you know what? I can't think like that no more. I, I can't think like that. I, I can't let that go inside of me. I know it came to my mind. I know it was there. But, but, but God forbid, I'm not going to let it come inside of me and stay there because I don't want to carry resentment and it's only going to damage my spirit. You, you may have never acted out, but, 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 you, but, but, but you never got over being misunderstood. I never got over the fact you didn't understand me. And so therefore, I never got over it. So my spirit is messed up. And, and you may have never retaliated. But sometimes you harbor bitterness when you were attacked in the service of God. God, help. Help, Pastor. I'm going to Hey, you ever told God, I was just trying to do the right thing. Why did you allow this to happen in my life? That's going to be real with me. I didn't pray to go on that before. Amen. I was just trying to be right. I, just, I did what you told me to do. I, I was just trying to obey the word of God and live by faith, not by sight. I did what you told me to do, and I got attacked in the meantime. And sometimes, y'all better hear me. It's hard. We got to understand. I, I, I'm a judge. Text me about this. I might have to do this. We understand that. that uh, about writing about this a little bit further. That, that we have got to learn. It is only our job to survive what God allowed to happen. And you didn't want to hear that. You don't like to hear that. But the truth is, God will allow some stuff to happen in your life just because. Oh, I know. I got a lot of clap on that one. You don't want to hear that. You want to believe that God will never let nothing happen to you. That he will always do this and do that. But sometimes, because you name the name of Christ, he will allow some things to happen. Oh, if I was Baptist, I'd say, come on, Brother Job. Job, the Bible said, he walked up right before God, did everything right, and God allowed everything he had. And just watched it. Ain't it rough when God allows you to be attacked? You just watch it. You run back and say, Lord, you know, I need you, Jesus. Come on my behalf, God. They know I'm this. I'm, I'm getting this is happening. Everything I turn to, like it's failing. And I know I'm living right. I know I'm fasting. I know I'm praying. I know I'm in your service. It seems like everything I touch it seems to mess up. Why are you allowing this? And God just watches. Oh, y'all better hear me. I've learned it is only my job to survive what God allows. It is my job to survive. It is also my job to go through with the right mindset. I have to go through like Joe said, naked I came in here. Naked I'm going to leave. Y'all better hear me. The Bible says that he said, you know, that we're going to go back but he would never begin to curse the name of God. He kept his integrity. He said, you know, this is who God is. I got to restore. He's the restorer of my soul. And of all that stuff that went into your spirit and it damaged it. But the days of refreshing, y'all better hear me. They are here. The restoration of the shepherd is available to the sheep. Thank God that he restores me. Because when I go through that as an elder prayer, when I begin to say, Lord, why don't you allow this to happen? He reminds me that Daniel, you better understand that what you're going through, other people went through it. Somebody else is going through it. If you name the name of 
praise. You will suffer persecution. If Jesus did it, you got to do it. You can't call yourself Christ-like, but only want the power. You can't call yourself Christ-like, but only want the authority. You can't call yourself Christ-like, but only want the blessing. You got to say, Lord, if Jesus had a cross to bear, Thank God he restores me. So, so he also restores my strength. He restores my strength. You know, see, we need to understand that kingdom work requires, you know, y'all, a strengthened people. Kingdom work requires a strengthened people. You gotta have some strength to do kingdom work. You know, my, my, my father, whenever he got up early in the morning, and he started cooking pancakes, and bacon, sausage, and all this food. I mean, grits up there, oatmeal. We would get scared. And if you knew it, then my dad, you know why we got scared. That means we've been to work. We about to work. When he get up in the morning time, a bowl of cereal, you know we're going to be cool that day. But if you get up and he cooking all that food, you about to work. Because he won't show strength up. Y'all yeah. ready to get in there? So that you can work and see pop up on them candles. You know, he can eat breakfast and just dinner. He don't really need lunch that much. He's going to be out there the whole time because he want that first meal to strengthen him. You yeah. ready to get me? Because it takes strength to do kingdom work. And you want that. We talked to man about this week. You wonder why you come here and you get all this word, all this empowerment, all this spiritual food. It ain't that you can go home and say, I feel pretty good now. I, I think I'm making it through my week now. No, God is giving you all this food so you can leave out of here and you got the strength to do kingdom work. Uh, you didn't want to hear that one, but that's the truth now. You don't just get in here and go, I, I thank God the pastor really preaching. I can make it through my week. No, the Bible says you got the salvation to make it through your week. You come here to be edified. You come here to be equipped to go do some work. So the kingdom work needs to strengthen people. However, working for the kingdom, I'm going to go ahead and say it, it saps the strength of the believer. I didn't want to hear that one. Yeah, it, it will sap your strength. I don't care how strong you are, work will make you tired. Amen? So, so, so doing the business of the Father, it has a cost. And that cost is virtue. We need to understand that we're not any different from Jesus. That Jesus was out there healing people. And he was laying hands on people, doing all that, and somebody grabbed the, 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 the hem of his garment. And then it's different when someone pulls something out of you. And he said, you know what? Somebody touched me. They said, they said Jesus, you need to go crowd. You know, they were worried about coronavirus. Then they didn't go crowd. He said, we need to go crowd. And, and, and how can you say somebody touched me? No, somebody touched me. And when they touched me, I felt something come out of me. Oh, yeah. uh, it's different when some people touch you. And so, so Jesus, we're not different from Jesus. If he lost strength and he had to go away sometimes to recharge himself. Ministry work can pull virtue and strength from the people of God. And you cannot deceive yourself into believing that you will sometimes need to be restored in your strength. You gotta believe that sometimes you need to be restored. As a pastor, I like to sit up on the people to hear the word of God too. That's why I'm in Sunday school too. Yeah. That's why when we have someone to come in and do a word on, on Sunday night, I don't say that's my Sunday to take off. I'm there too. Because I need something. Oh, y'all better hear me. I know that sometimes my soul, my spirit needs to be strengthened back up. First Peter 5 and 10. Let me get on out of here. It says, and after, First Peter 5 and 10, and after you have suffered a little while. Jesus is watching you suffer. After you suffer a little while. The God of all grace, yeah. who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. Suffering is not optional for the believer. In option. Suffering is not optional for the believer. You will suffer. 
I say for anybody who didn't hear me, you will suffer. It is God ordained. It is from the kingdom. It is from God's throne that you will suffer. You can rebuke it. You can say, I don't receive that. You can say, I don't hear that. That's not what I want to hear. It don't matter what you want to hear. It don't matter what you rebuke. If God sends suffering, you are going to suffer. Oh, I'm going to say it and move on. That's why you got to be careful when you tell somebody you going through because you messed up. You going through because you sinned. No, sometimes they are going through because God has ordained it for you to suffer and suffering is not optional. It's a requirement for anyone that names the name of God. You cannot walk in the authority of Jesus and not suffer like he suffered. Suffering sets energy and it sets strength from you. But after you have suffered for a little while, after our strength seems like it's been depleted, we serve a God that will personally come down and restore us. He gives strength to us when we need it the most. The Bible says, now let the weak say I am strong. Not because what we have done, but because we serve a God who allow us to suffer for a little while, more strength than we had before so that we can fight and win the next battle. All you gotta do is wait on it. Wait on it. In the old church when we had communion, I don't know if my aunt did it, but somebody did it before they had, they sold this scripture into the white cloth. My aunt sold the scripture into the white cloth. Isaiah 40 and 31. Y'all love this. We can preach this one. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. He used to sit and say, Lord, why don't you come down and help me? Why don't you come down and change it? No, I just got to wait on the Lord. If I just sit here and wait on God, the Bible says they shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. I'm learning that God begins to stretch my strength. He begins to pull me even farther and farther every time. This is strength and conditioning, y'all. That if I want to run one mile, I got to get used to running two miles. If I'm going to run three miles, i got to get used to running three to run four miles. I've learned something that God does a thing inside of you. He says, if you can go through this, I'm going to give you more strength. So you can go through two times more the second time. No matter what happens, no matter how much I suffer, no matter how much he's not talking back to me, I've learned to just wait on it. I check myself. Lord, am I in sin? Have I done anything wrong? And God says, no. This is going to be ordained by my heart. It's ordained by my word that you gotta suffer. And after I suffered a while, I thank God that He comes in and restores me. He restores my strength. He restores my strength. He's he gonna make sure that I'm ready for the next battle. He, 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 he's looking at the battle I'm gonna face next year. I gotta go ahead and just make this plan to get him out the way. You know, he, he, he knew this was coming. You see, you see, he knew we gonna face this next year. You, you trying to get right now. But he was trying to prepare you back in September. He was saying, seek my face now. Oh, Y'all better hit me. He said, because I'll come to a point gonna suffer a while. Y'all better hear me. We gotta suffer a little while. But I thank God that he himself comes down to restore, to confirm, to strengthen and establish us. Somebody say he restores me. Alright, alright. So, he restores my stuff. He restores my stuff too. Because God brings back what I lost sometimes. Hear me first with this one. Through my disobedience. Because sometimes we all stuff in life because we're disobedient. Check out with both sides of this now. Ain't always just God doing some stuff. I was talking to a man of God, the man of God, Pastor, not Bishop, but Pastor Coleman uh, came in Sunday. He was saying, you know, that we pray for houses and cars and stuff like that. Come you know on. what? We ain't got to pray for that. We ain't got to pray for none of that stuff. God gives me a plane and a child. He don't 
care what kind of car I drive. He just want to make sure the car I drive is not my God to the point I stop paying tithes. I'm giving my tithes because of my car. He want to make sure I'm not going to sit there and, and, and stay at home to watch my car and then come to service. He don't care what kind of car you drive. Like, I, I sold a car for one summer and the man said, I'll oh, get 10 cans on wheels. They can put a sign in front of them. That's all they are. They, 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 they're nothing special about it. They all call it. You can get whatever you want. But when you do it out of God's timing, yeah. out of God's will, don't expect him to take care of that. Yeah. I pray. All thing I pray, I said, Lord, like when I get my money together, I said, Lord, I pray that you help me to pay this. And I pray that I'll stay healthy. But God says, you got to count the cost yourself. Yeah. That's what a wise man does, right? Because you're going to go to battle with that finance company. And the Bible says before a wise man go to battle, he counts up the costs. But when we know, we get disobedient, he takes some stuff, don't we? Oh, he'll take it. He'll take it. So Jeremiah 30 and 3 says, 